Hello, Let's Watch TV listeners, and welcome Hello. back to Let's Watch Tana TV. Let's watch it with Tana Vistion. I'm having a really hard time being home. Oh, I can tell. Oh, I can yeah. Tell. I'm, Mom, the I'm rabbit literally... holes you're going. God, are you being creative at all? Because the rabbit holes you're going down are like insane. The rabbit holes I'm going to am I be am I <laughs> Are you being creative at all? Mom, that's hysterical. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, but just before we get started, everyone, I'm gonna be in Lexington, Kentucky next weekend. Um, then off for a week, and then it's Portland, Vancouver, Seattle, Milwaukee, Appleton. Um, doing a couple spots in LA, uh, San Francisco, Fort Wayne, Providence. Timonia, Maryland, Spokane, Salt Lake City, Vegas, Dania Beach, D.C., Calgary, uh, Comedy at the Carlson in Rochester, Pittsburgh, Denver. Get your tickets at thejodombrowski.com. Okay, Mom. Hey, I want to ask you a question. Do you really oh, need to spill off all those places and dates every single episode? Well, considering it is my career, uh, yeah. But I don't hear other people do that. Well, I don't I don't care what other people are doing ever. I'm going to do me. Huh. Let them do them. I'm not okay. missing an opportunity. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm not missing it. If you dare to compare, you'll wind up in despair. I'm out here oh, doing I it agree. to the beat of my own drum. I got it. Okay. What's up? What's those rabbit holes? What's um, going on? Well, just so you guys know, this today's episode is going to be the, on The Trust on Netflix, which you know my very good friend and podcast co-host Gaspar Randazzo is a... <laughs> major character on um mom i have to tell you something so funny yeah so he gasper's in la right now filming some netflix content oh is he today he went show yeah, yeah. He's, he just got he got there last night he's there today and he just sent me a picture he's like look at the car they sent to pick me up and it came with a butler and i said please dear god do not call him a butler to his face <laughs> <laughs> he's a driver <laughs> he's your driver He's your driver. That's cute. Get it together. Get it together. Get it together. He's having the time of his life. So Good. where do we start? Well, let's, well, let's start first... with the show. Right. Uh, you told us what... just yet. No, right. What's up with you? You told us you're going down rabbit holes. You need to get back to work. So these rabbit holes stop. Um, I do need to get back on the road. And honestly, like I haven't picked up my joke book in like a week, which is not good. But I'm fine with it because yeah. I, I, I used to do this shit on the internet like I'm doing right now. I used to do <laughs> like just like funny nonsense. It's just fun. I'm just like tapping into this other side that I haven't done in like a very long time because I've been so focused on my stand up. But right. some of the rabbit holes that I've fallen down are <laughs> insane. In well, insane. Can I talk to you about the most recent one? Well, yeah, I, the, the Dateline one is the one I'm really interested in. That is exactly the one that I'm going to talk to you about. Did you watch Dateline this week? No, I heard you on your rabbit hole Instagram, and you said <laughs> something about Dateline this week. Kids have the parents killed for money, and I thought, don't you ever kill mom and dad for money, because we'll, we'll be leaving you with our bills going, hey, there ain't, <laughs> shit, there ain't shit here. You better go and pay it. <laughs> so if you kill I us, also... it ain't going to be for our money. <laughs> <laughs> I also made Morgan laugh so hard while we were watching it. Okay, you for those made of him? you who are new to Let's Watch TV podcast. Yeah, I, you guys, I've talked about this a couple times. My future mother-in-law and I have a running joke because she's the one who got me into Dateline, by the way. Really? And okay. Yep. Oh, yeah. And her and I, when we watch Dateline together, we're constantly like, pause it. And then just like, talk, 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 figure it out, figure it out, play, talk, 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 talk. So we tell each other that we're going to take a community college um, <laughs> forensic science course and we are going to be um, Ro and Joe, the, de you know, freelance <laughs> detectives. <laughs> Which I really think there's a movie script here. Yeah, there Rojo, is. Rojo, the freelance detectives. <laughs> and we go, Morgan and I started it, and we were like seven. It's a two-hour episode of Dateline, oh, by the way. Which yeah, is a, okay. It's one of the longer ones. Yeah. And 
we're we're seven minutes in and I just turned to Morgan and I was like, Ro would have had this solved already. And he just <laughs> laughed. <so. laughs> Maybe so Ro I, can come on our podcast. I did solve it so Hi, early. It's just, there's just like, there's And it's about kids it. who kill their parents for so, money. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, to give the fans, to catch you guys up to speed, I'm going to dumb it down, way dumb it down for you. Hey, don't do that this on my behalf. I think it's called Ghosts Can't Talk. I think it's called Ghosts oh, Can't Talk. Oh, yeah. And um, it's about this family whose son, their own, they own a jeweler mm. in Texas, like a very well-known uh, jewelry company in mm -hmm. Texas. And mm -hmm. he plots to kill, pay to have them killed. And he does, and they kill his dad and their dog, but not the mom. The mom, because the mom slept with a She's... gun over her bed and she shot back and they told her that was the only thing that saved her life. But um, yeah, okay. So here's here's a couple things that I think about it, okay? One, this family had troubles having a child. So the mom eventually turned to her husband and she was like, you know what? I don't feel like I need to give birth. I feel like I need to be a mother. So they went to Ukraine and adopted this boy from Ukraine. And he mm -hmm. was raised all the way until he was 20, 20 something, brought him over to this country, raised him, invested their life into him. And then he tried to kill them. Unbelievable. I think mm -hmm. about this when people kill family members all the time. It's like, all the time? So I hope not time. all the time. <laughs> Honestly, I hope they're outliers in the system. Oh, God. <laughs> Honestly, I do think about it a lot of time. It's like, it's, especially people who kill their parents, it's like you raise these kids, you spend time with them, you sacrifice cook, your vaginal cook, elasticity, cook. and then they kill you. And then they kill well, you. Anyway. Well, we just, yeah. And then we got parents who kill their kids. How could you possibly do that? How could That's you possibly even do that? That's even crazy. That's so this is That's the crazy, crazy part about oh, the crazy. case, okay? Yeah, did Ro, did Ro find out who that was before? Did she figure that we out? We didn't talk to her about it. So I keep watching the episode, and, and here's the thing. The son is young, but he, like, just recently got married, and him and his wife are having all these financial troubles, all right? And there is evidence that she was for sure in on this. There's text messages that they found where they were trying to negotiate how much it was going to cost and if it was worth it. Then on top of that, there are, um, there are, she, he asked her to take out a little bit more money so that he would have the total money that it was going to cost. So she said, okay, she went to the bank, she withdrawed the money in cash, gave it to him so that they could pay for it. She was with him on several trips to the house when they were plotting to do it. And when police were interviewing her, she's like, oh, I was I never thought he was serious. I never thought he was serious. When it would get too serious, I was going to shut it down. I thought it was just like, oh, yeah, you need this money to kill your parents. Sure, sure, sure. And she only got like 120 something days of jail time. And that's that's mom. That's not even a year. That's crazy. It's not this even a year. This fucking bitch mm. is out there walking hey, the streets. Hey. She's mm. out there now living her life. In the open, lock her up, euthanize her. I'm not trying lock to have that type up. of crazy lock out her here. Up. <laughs> lock her up, lock her up. I'm sorry, but that type of psychosis does not need to be back with the gen pop. All right, that's just not. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel. In okay. Insane, insane, right? These stories and that spent. First Morgan of all was laughing so hard I was up screaming at my TV like it was the Super Bowl. <laughs> Yeah, he didn't even do that for the Lions game when they just won a big, big, big game the other day. But I don't, I used to watch Dateline, but dad goes to bed early and I can't watch Dateline or those shows because they freak me out at <laughs> night. They scare you. Yeah. They scare me. So I don't watch them anymore. So, wow. Well, that's good. Um, About me. Is it good? Do, well, <laughs> it's good because you enjoy the show. <laughs> it does something, it's you know. It's not good. It's not good. You go down that rabbit hole. But anyway, um. I started um, my weight plan and 
I do this every year and I never do it January 1. I never do it the first Monday. I wait. So I just started Weight Watchers for the 355,000th time <laughs> in my life. And um, which it works. If you do what you're supposed to do, it works. Uh, but so I thought, okay, it's been the holidays. I know I gained some weight. I got to weigh myself this morning because I started. So I got on the scale and I swear that bitch was yelling, <laughs> get off of me. <laughs> Step away. Get off of me. <laughs> I'm telling you. That. I'm telling you. I looked down and went, did holy you hear shit. That? You did not shit. say that yourself. You just stole someone's too. joke. You must have. No, I didn't. You, didn't. you did. Come on. You didn't say that. You saw that at someone's comedy. I, why do you say that? It's. I just <laughs> said it. I just no. thought it and just said it. Anyway, um, no, no you can go ahead and what is that called? You can go ahead and research me. Go ahead. Oh, I will. Uh, no, I made that. I made that up. So anyway, you know, where do you think your funny comes from? You think it's just you? There's no way you heard it from something or somewhere. Anyway, anyway. Anyway, so I started that, uh, and what I do is I gently tiptoe into the program. Like, I don't go haw hog because I know when I do. So I like, I start kind of watching. So this week is the watching phase, getting better phase, watch my step phase and all that. So I'll keep the, uh, I'll keep the uh, viewers updated and the listeners on how successful this is. I got a wedding to go to in mm -hmm. June. Mm -hmm. I swear Say to less. God, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to, you know, so <laughs> God, it's going to be bad. Anyway, anyway, um, why don't we talk about the trust? First of all, I've got my whole family's watching it. Dad's whole family's watching it. Everybody I know is watching it. Everybody is watching this show. Go Gasper. Can't Go wait Gasper. for the someone, drop. Someone asked me today. They were like, who do you like on the show besides Gasper? I was like, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Nobody. Eric, the They're only like, one I like... Someone said, who's your second favorite? I go, no one. Gasper's my first through 11 favorite. <laughs> well, first it. of all. There's nothing I'll, else to say. For for anybody who doesn't know, um, uh, Joe Gasper Randazzo is on The Trust, which is on Netflix. It released four episodes last week on January the 10th. And a lot of people more won't do those. tonight at midnight. Pacific oh, tonight time, at midnight. 3 well, three more. 3 so dad's time. all invested. I'm all well, invested. Well, by the time My people are watching this, the next episodes are out. So, right. So, be, how many are there? That would be, are, how many are they releasing? Three? There four? will be. So, they released four the first round. Right. Tomorrow, they release three. And okay. then four. Two. And then three. And uh -huh. then a finale the next week, okay so so dad's all invested too we're all watching anyway let's the cast members there's 11 players joe talked about it it's about greed it's about are you going to share this money with other people it's about voting people out you know out of the trust it's all that kind of stuff that's the challenge the cast members there are 11 there's a a tolu who's from nigeria she's 26 years old just to go in, in for people who don't know julie 28 she's an entrepreneur winnie is a bartender she's 31 simone is unemployed She's 55 and she's still unemployed. Lindsay, 43. She's a business coach. Brian, who's 42 and he's a rancher. Jake, 37. He's a military um, contractor. Bryce, 22 year old, is a real estate agent. Jay is 70. It's a she and she's a retired female. And she doesn't do I, much for I'm the sorry. female retired population. She, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What? What? You just said she's a retired female? No, I said she's retired. She's a female. Uh, okay. Because her name is Jay. Said, I know, but you just said the well, way you be. said it. Nowadays, the way you just be. said it is she's a you. The way you just said it is I'm she's retiring a retired my female. female. I'm going to be oh, somebody she's a else. Retired field, I guess. So. No, okay, no, keep going. she's retired. She's a female because her name is Jay. Seventy years old. She doesn't represent our retired people very well. And then there's who else? J U E L Z, who's 32 years old and a police officer, and then dun da da da, Gasper, who's 33 years old. That's what it said. He's really 34, right? And he's a teacher. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. is our the host is Brooke Baldwin, um, formerly from CNN. She's very pretty, by the way. And um, so Joe, why don't you take it from there? 
Okay, the so if you haven't watched the show, catch up. But they're basically the premise of the show is eleven people are there. There's two hundred fifty thousand dollars on the line. There's a vote every single night. If you have the most votes at the end of the night, you're out. And who's ever left at the end splits the money equally. However many people that ends up being. So it starts out all fun and games where they're like we're gonna stick to this to the end we're all gonna make it we're all gonna make it and then they just start picking each other off obviously but listen here's the interesting part one if 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 everybody votes and just one name is brought up by one person out of 11 let's say that person goes all you have to do is get somebody to vote one time one person and everybody else yeah. doesn't vote anybody, that person goes. So it doesn't have to be like a majority vote you off the campus, you know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, crazy. Yeah. So, and if you listen to Joe and Morgan on their podcast, they talk about it um, and give some tea. So it's really fun. So everybody, um, what do you think about the show in itself? Um, what do I think about the show? You know, I gotta say this. I love it. I'm a, I'm addicted to it. I think it has all the elements of reality TV. I don't necessarily think it's anything original. I think, Darker. you know, mm-hmm. there's there's another show out there that I won't say the name that this is like pretty much along the same lines of how that game goes. Um, but with that said, it's got some fun twists and it's fun to watch. And I don't know. I'm either extremely biased or Gasper is so obviously the best person cast on the show. Right. Like it seems like it seems like even in watching it and I I can't I can never say what it would be like to watch the show without knowing anybody because I know Gasper and I know him so well. Right. But when I watch the show, I'm like. Are they all cuckoo for coconuts and Gasper's the only sane, normal person in this home? Or or are the or am I super biased? Or is Gasper a nut basket? Also? No. Well, you know, first of all, <laughs> right. it's so funny. You don't get his personality on there yet hasn't fully come out, but he is funny. He'll have these little corpses of funny. And yeah. um he's so smart because he's not being so obvious out there. But or either right. the way they edited or whatever. But the, the, a couple of girls were walking away from a um, uh, talk and a get together, and somebody said, "We got to get away from Gasper telling all these stories." <laughs> I thought if I know. anybody knows Gasper, <laughs> he tells all the stories. I said, "Oh, they got to know him for sure." With all but, the details, yeah. So he's he's very so, nice on the show. He's not a backstabber Morgan- on the show. Morgan even said it's so cool to watch him being on the show because it's like this person that we know and it's like, oh, my God. And he's just like on your TV. And the best part about watching him on the show is that. okay, there's a couple characters on the show and I'll just name names and say it like it is. Sorry if you're friends with these people, Gasper, I'm just going to light them up. The girl, (laughs) Lindsay, there's this one girl, Lindsay, she's like. Mormon from Salt Lake City he like got a divorce and like married another husband and there's like there's like some shit there whatever 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 well yeah turn this off if you don't is. want any of this tea people no there's not really tea either either she's like that and that's just who she is as a person but mm-hmm. when she's in the confessional and she's talking to the camera it just is coming off like so acting to the point mm-hmm. where I called Ax- Gasper and I was like, yo, is she an actress? Like they right. hired an actress and they were like, hey, here's your role. You are this Mormon woman from Salt yeah. Lake City who was done right. wrong by your husband. So I now you're in the house and what do you act like now? You know? And then yeah. like, we just like never knew it. And then like in eight months, we find out she used to be in like plumbing commercials in her local town or something. But I just feel like it's just so overacting. Like, well, what did he say about so it? So hard to make screen time. I can't say. So, oh, okay. so she's not an actress is what she oh, did. That's he did all say I'm that, asking. Though. Yeah. But like, she's the prime example to me of like, try like doing it. I'll say doing it for screen time. 
She's doing it for screen time. Like her little hissy fit that she threw at that Jake guy because he put her last at the end of a line, which had literally no repercussions anyway. I was just kind of like, you're doing this for get to get the cameras on you. And as I watch every single one of these people, with the exception of that Simone, who I did come around to, mm-hmm. I feel like they're all doing it for the cameras. Except for Gasper. Every time I see him, I'm like, he's just like this. This is exactly who he is. But 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 the thing about it, the difference is, is we know him. You know him better than I know him for sure. Which is so, why I said I don't know if I don't know if that girl is like just like that or not. Right, right. Gasper seems to be his true authentic self, but people don't know that uh the general viewer doesn't know what he's really like. And- I'll say that too. And regardless of me thinking about those people, like this is just me and my personal thoughts. Mm -hmm. Either way, it's good TV. It's good TV. You know, and I I asked myself, am I enjoying this only because Gasper's on it? What is it about, you know, do I really like the concept of the show I thought about? And then I thought, Mm -hmm. you know what? I like the concept of the show. It's not much different than any other thing because we watch this stuff a lot because of our, Right, right. But then I thought, well, the fun part is that the extra added element for us is we know Gasper. That's the fun extra element that a lot of people don't have. So watching him move through it is really kind is very fun. Very fun. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, Aunt Nancy watched it and she's going, I love Gasper. Some people know him from your podcast. That's it, you know, and then now they're uh-huh, seeing uh-huh. him differently and people just love him. That's, we know that's the way he is, right? He's, he's, he's yeah. being his authentic self. So, Truly. Uh, and, and he's funny. And there's been some parts <laughs> that were pretty funny. <laughs> like he said, why did I spray, um, uh, what is that called? Um, sunscreen on oh my god he sprayed that. sun he's, like, he's, right in his face he goes why did i do that right now, most people people most people wouldn't catch that you know but it's I like know, oh it's just like god. in the corner the best is watching gasper when he doesn't remember he's on camera it's so funny well it's anyway, gotta be what interesting do you think of the other people on the show well you're right simone i warmed up to because i first said oh, man this bimbo my god you know lead jesus lord um, mm-hmm. I but I warmed up to her for sure. Love Brian. Love Brian. The Brian Gasper duo. Wait, hold on. Who do you think Simone is? Simone is that unemployed fifty-five-year-old. Yeah. Okay. Um, I didn't like her at first because I was just. Well, you're asking like, me mm, who I liked. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, but when did yeah, you come first, around to her? When did you come around to her? It took a couple of episodes, probably episode. You know, two. There was a she. Was, she's very was much it? to me. I might be wrong, and Gasper's probably gonna listen to this. Say, oh, no, nah, that's not true. She seemed to me to be like Gasper in terms of this is my true self. This is I think I so am. too. I really think and, so too. And that's why I began like those other girls. I, I, first of all, I, I could hardly get through it because catty women drive me nuts. Um. Mm-hmm. They were driving me nuts. Aunt Ginger could only watch the first one. She goes, I got to turn this off. It reminds me of The Bachelor. I got to. And then she start watching it again. But but Simone just was like, she just she was herself now, no matter which way she came across the screen. I loved when all the girls were coming for that one guy and they were like, OK, and oh. everybody keep in mind, you're seeing you're seeing the version of the show that Netflix wants you to see. Right. Right. You don't know what happened in there. Right. The way Gasper explained it, he's like, you're on camera for 24 hours and they give you a one hour episode of multiple days. They're choosing right. certain parts of the day. Right. And so you don't know she, what it when is. they were all coming after that guy, they're like, he's misogynistic and the girls are sticking together and we're all sticking together. And Simone's like, don't speak for me. I'm actually pro oh, him. That's what I fell in love with her. Relationship. Me too. That's when I because fell in this, love with her. This J woman. <laughs> she keeps coming across. She's like. She's like, misogyny, misogyny, misogyny. And she's not coming to the table with a solution. And that's my least favorite type of person ever. At least now the internet is lighting up about Tolu and what she had to do with Jake. Because she, first of all, she came to Jake and she's like, I don't like when you call me this African queen. Whatever. I can't speak on it. However, the show did show you that she was like, 
I'm African, I'm African, I'm African, I'm African, I'm Nigerian, I'm African. And then she had a problem with it. And then she goes back and says, I never said I was African. The internet is exploding (laughs) over this. Okay. What's it saying? What's it saying? Basically that they were like, you were, you, you claimed all this was you basically, you made it your whole identity. And then when someone referred to you as this thing that you've been talking about for forever, you got mad about it. Now, yeah. Put it aside. Put it aside. Think whatever you want about it. At least she brought it to the table and took him aside and said, here is, regardless of if you agree with it or not, here is a problem I have with something you did. Here's how I would like to move forward. This J woman is just shouting it at him with no solution, with no request for anything, with no sort of here, I'm telling you this, and I would like to give you an opportunity. No, she's not. And that is so annoying to me. Now, did she actually do it in real life in the house? I don't know. I wasn't there. But the version of what I'm seeing on Netflix is that she's just sort of barking at him without giving him a bone. Yeah, right, right. Well, the other part is about that, that Jay is when she went into the vault and voted, and I'm not going to say for who or what, had no real rhyme or reason why she did that. Oh, she did. She did. Okay, spoiler alert. Uh, but spoiler not, alert. Spoiler no, no, don't, 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 don't do it. Don't do it. No, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. She Turn she it off if off. you don't want to hear it. Three, two. Okay, if you're still here, we're going to talk about it. She voted off Simone. Now, she voted off Simone and didn't really say why. She was just like, I'm voting for this person. That's how I feel, and I'm doing it. She voted for Simone because what Simone said at the dinner table when she was when she said, don't talk for me. Don't put words in my mouth. Don't speak for me. That's why she vo- She did that one thing, and Jay was like, you're gone. Now, Simone, honestly, I'm shocked she didn't see the writing on the wall and vote for her back. She's not that kind of person. She wasn't. Yeah, vo- she right. was not voting. She seemed. She seemed to be the type of person that, unless you were obviously coming at her, she would be that I forgive them sort of person. And she looked like she was the type of person who would share that whole pot, you know. And um, but yet she wasn't that naive either, you know. So yeah, she she's she's my favorite. So she was one of my favorites I, for um, sure. But right now, who's my favorite? Like Gasper. Gasper, for sure. But I got to tell you something else. What? Julie, the young, hot girl, is kind no, of annoying. No. And kinda. she's uh, kinda. Crying, crying. And she's sucking up to this. She's sucking up to this Jake military guy flirting, using her sex appeal to get him on her side. And she says blah, that. Blah, blah. She yeah, said yeah, that yeah, twice. Yeah. She's doing it. Got to tell you something. I got to tell you something. I like her gameplay because everybody else in the house is having, including Gasper as it stands right now, is having this kumbaya session of we're all going to make it till the end. And as a viewer of the show, I don't want to see you all make it to the end. I want to see you get yourself to the end. That's what I want to well, watch. I want to watch but a little Ju- fuckery. Julie's not being Julie, kumbaya which is why I said I like her gameplay. I like oh, what she's, she's out doing. First out. Oh, I like it. she's voting okay. people off. When we left, she accepted a offer that benefits her and not the group, which we to as we as it stands right now, we don't know what that was. Right. But I am appreciating her. I feel like she's giving me something worth watching rather than everyone like the cowboy. Love him to death because he's Gasper's friend, but Brand he's like Mister. He's like Mister. We're a family. We can all make it to the end if we just don't vote each other out. I'm like, no, vote each other out. Get your money. Get your coin. You got here for a reason. Now we can figure it out. It's just well, how I. This people, is what I want to see. It's just what I want to see. Personal preference. Well, people want to play it safe. Like if everybody stays, we get a part of something. Now, two hundred fifty thousand is not a lot of money, no. right? First of all, it's not a lot. When you're going to the Dominican Republic and put in this place and whatever, I mean, even to win one person $250,000 is not that much money to me. I'm surprised. I mean, they used to have prizes like, you know, $750,000, $1 million, you'll win a million. You don't see that much anymore, you know? So um, 
I don't think that's a lot of money. And if you had to split that among 11 people, what are you going to do? Go home and buy some popcorn? I mean, really. So um, that, that's interesting. That, that, that money yeah. is interesting. So some people just think, let's all go. We'll go home with something. So, but you kind of like, you know, you like that. He is so much like Gasper. Yeah. You know, he is so much like him that I can see why they're friends. So anyway, that's what I got to say about that. Boom. Oh, Boom. God. The trust Boom. on Netflix. You guys go watch it. Be team Gasper Randazzo or else don't talk. To listen me. to us. Anyway. Listen to social studies because they drop uh, the backstage stories and things like that. So all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take a yeah. listen. So what is it time for now, Joe? It is time for Mama Fran's segments. Why don't you start with the PSA so we don't end on a uh, crazy I got note. it in an order. I got it in an order. You're not my boss yep. all the time. Okay. Hmm, well, the first thing I'm going to... First one I have is I have a bone to pick. Okay? Great. And the bone I have to pick is people being interrupted or watching other people interrupt people while they're talking. Especially mm. if somebody, and, and this is something I used to do, and dad said, uh, you're interrupting me. And I had to learn to listen, stop and listen and stuff to interjecting. But the worst ones are when people are talking, somebody, let's say your partner, spouse, whoever is talking, and you jump in in the middle of their mouth being open talking, and they just start talking for you on the same subject, like you're a dummy and you don't know how to tell your own story. That makes yeah. me insane. So insane. Um, what people, and what I looked up is people interrupt for a number of reasons. In many cases, the need to compete, complete a train of thought leads people to interject comments at inappropriate times. At other yeah. times, inter interrupting can be a way to contribute to a conversation to help demonstrate that the other person is listening, which I, that's bullshit. I don't believe that. But it says, is interrupting someone disrespectful? By interrupting someone when they're talking, you put forth the impression that whatever they have to say is not important to you or anyone else who has joined in on the conversation. And it's very mm. rude. Regardless mm. of what you have to say, please do not interrupt someone else. Well, let me tell you what else. I'm thinking. <laughs> you <just did> it <laughs> exactly. Over. Wait until they're done before you start to speak. So, yeah. What, what do you yeah. think about that? Fully agree. I'm a big culprit of this. My bad. My bad. <laughs> my yeah, and, bad. And I am too. And I have to really, really, you know, stop myself and listen because it's it's embarrassing to the person you're interrupting. Anyway, um, yeah. I I sort of have just one a one time segment that I just want to play with you. Hang on, just a minute. Okay, we're gonna play a game with you. Would you rather? Okay. okay. And if it comes to something, I might have a question of why you said that. And it's really mm -hmm. quick. And it's, oh, really? So, Joe, would you rather use scissors or paste? Scissors. Eat cheese for one day or one year? A uh, year, for sure. What, this That's isn't even difficult. Would you rather have a duck sized elephant or an elephant sized duck? Get, this is the bullshit that Gasper asks me. Um, would you rather have a duck-sized elephant? A duck-sized elephant. Would you rather wear a clown wig or clown shoes every day? Clown wig. Because, only because if you had clown shoes on every day, you couldn't run away from robbers and stuff. <laughs> well, that's my but PSA. You run, would yeah. you rather travel on a donkey or a giraffe? Um donkey i think a giraffe would kill you also you'd have to have a ladder with you at all times to get up and back <laughs> well you're halfway down. up there so would you rather be toilet paper or to toilet tissue or tissue paper would you rather be toilet paper or tissue paper that's disgusting obviously tissue paper okay obviously. would you rather be smacked okay here's a good one would you rather be smacked in the face by a fish or clean up a kindergartner's throw up Well, you know, the fish is leading me down foodborne illness. And since food poisoning, <laughs> I am very conscious of that. So not the fish. I think I've cleaned up kindergarten throw up before I could do it again. 
Okay. Would you rather be a rewind button or a pause button? Re That's the stupidest shit I've ever heard. Rewind. Okay. Would you rather drink green tea every day or drink coffee? Coffee. Would you rather have a horse tail or a unicorn horn? This is some bullshit. Horse tail. It's, you can hide it. You don't know how to play a game. Would you rather eat ice cream or pizza or eat pizza? Pizza. Would you rather do Let's Watch TV with your mom or Oprah Winfrey? Oprah. You traitor. You traitor. That was the it's, end of Hey, I'm building a business over here. I'm trying to grow. <laughs> Joe D's. <laughs> That that's the end of that segment is is what would you rather be? Okay. Um, Mama Franz PSA. Today, Mama Franz PSA is the six healthiest pasta sauces on the shelf and four to avoid. Okay. And this is co according to a document, eat this, not that. Um, what it says is no pasta night is complete without marinara sauce. And the, th and the thing is, not everyone has time to make a traditional Sunday sauce that simmers on the stove all day. And that's where store-bought marinara come in handy. Um, while basic marinara sauce can be straightforward as tomatoes and salt, the grocery store shelves present an array of options, each with its unique blend of ingredients and nutritional profiles and spices and whatever. Uh, they spoke to a dietitian to find out exactly what they recommend when shopping for a marinara at the grocery store. Um, how you choose the best one, total calories, the sodium count, and the added sugar. So the six healthiest marijuana marinara sauce is number one in terms of salt, sugar, and all that, is Barilla traditional tomato paste sauce is the best overall. That's number one. Its nutritional calories are 45 calories with uh, only 0.5 grams of fat, so it's really in 430 milligrams of sodium. The second one is called Victoria low sodium marinara sauce. That's the mm -hmm. second one. Oh, yeah. It's, it's only got uh, 70 calories with four grams of fat. Three is Thrive Market's organ Organic Classic Marinara Sauce. The fourth is Primal Kitchen Tomato Basil Marinara Sauce. Some of this I never heard of before, but maybe I'm not looking. <laughs> Number five yeah. is my favorite, Rayo's Homemade Marinara Sauce. So it is up there, everybody. It's got 100 calories, seven grams of fat, just so everybody knows. Number six is Whole Foods Market Organic Pasta Sauce. And number, and the worst, so that's them, and the worst pasta sauce you can buy is Classico's, Classico Organic Marinara Pasta Sauce. That's the worst mm. one. And Dad loves mm. Classico Why? Tomato and Basil. Why he is it just, the worst one? Because it's just riddled it says in sodium. It's because the nutrition, it's 80 calories, 1.5 grams of fat, 500 milligrams of sodium, 15 grams of carbs. So this marinara mm. sauce appears to be generally Lower in calories. However, when you take a closer look at the nutrition label, you'll find 500 milligrams of sodium per serving and 10 grams of sugar, which is pretty high. The Wowzer. second worst, the second worst is, and all these I have seen on the shelf, Bertoli's tomato basil sauce is number two. Yeah. Number three is the number three worst is Prego's creamy tomato basil Italian sauce. Number yeah. four worst is Francesco Rinaldi sweet and tasty marinara sauce. Never even heard of it. Sounds disgusting. Never even heard that. So that are the four worst marinara. Let me see if I've got one more left. Nope. That's the <laughs> what, four what worst. What an exhilarating so conversation. Well, I thought for a PSA, that was really quite good information. Just mm -hmm. saying. So um, this week in entertainment news is the second part. Um, this is the start of award season the emmys the oscar the golden globes and all this i can't stand them they drive me crazy i think oh my god me too someone the other day i had um a uh, couple couple of uh peers who were hosting on the red carpet like hosting yeah. interviews with celebrities and right. uh, in my management meeting today they're like was that something that you would like to do eventually and i was like 
Hell no. The last thing that I want to do is be an interviewer on a carpet of rich people who are at an award ceremony just sucking each other off. That's the last situation that I want to be in. I do not want to well, be there at all. And if I am ever there, it's going to be because I'm up for an award. That's the Yeah, good for you. But it's yeah. all about, you know, they're patting each other on the back. Oh, job well done to each other. It's like you know, they're a bunch of narcissists anyway, so I don't, I hate them anyway. No, not the all art- of them. That's a not st- all of stereotyping them. my industry. I'm sorry. I just don't like them. Anyway, <laughs> I found an article that says Gen Zers, um, Gen Zers <laughs> have a cynical disposition towards these shows for multiple factors. And on LinkedIn, uh, Gen Z's grudge against the Oscars, it said, uh, multiple factors play a role in the decline, such as young people's preference for streaming services and cable television and the oversaturation of award shows in the entertainment industry. Social media is another threat to these shows. Viewership as users have access to real-time updates, highlights, and a live feed about the awards. This leaves no need to watch the lengthy live show. So the Gen Z's cynical disposition toward award shows has has also not helped viewership. Many members of the demographic have been quick to point out the corruption and lack of diversity in these events. For instance, mm-hmm. some regard Angela Bassett's recent loss of the Oscars, and they had a big thing to say about that. So I just mm-hmm. thought that that just was a little in, interesting in... um. Uh, the award show season coming up. Wow. Well, think, there you go. This one, I think you're going to find extremely in- interesting. Hit according me. to, according to the mousetrap news, women can now Mouse give trap. birth. Women can now give birth inside of Disney world. Yeah. What it says for so many people, Disney world is their, their world. Magic Kingdom now has a maternity ward. Um, This is a place where expected mothers can go give birth. This new building is located above Casey's Corner on Main Street, USA, and inside the Magic Kingdom. This is a perfect place to give birth for Disney fans because you can look at Cinderella's castle while you're delivering your child. The Magic Kingdom maternity ward will cost patients around $5,000 out of pocket to have their child delivered at Disney World. This is nearly double the cost of most hospitals around the United States. However, because it's Disney, they raised the price. Patients also need valid theme park tickets in order to be accepted into the Magic Kingdom maternity ward. So that that is well past nauseating. I heard that on the news today and thought, oh, my God, what do you think about that, Joe? I think it's disgusting and another opportunity for you to give more money to the Disney (laughs) situation. I roll my eyes so hard at Disney until the day that I get something with Disney Plus. And when that happens, throw on the fucking ears, girl. I'm going to be Mr. Disney. (laughs) Well, they're not going to hire you saying that F word. No shit. Throw no money shit. in the jar. Throw money in Whatever. the jar. Anyway, um, I, I just want to say the last time we t- were talking about tips, the tipping practices, we went off. That was like uh, one of my bones to pick. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, last time we talked about that. And I just want to say this. Krispy Kreme Donuts has a no <laughs> tipping policy. Shut up. Are you serious? I went to Krispy Kreme. Um, I said to the girl out of now habit, um, let me add a tip to that. And she says, I'm sorry, but um, we don't take tips here. I said, I looked at her. I go, shut up. And she said, no, nope, we don't take tips here. Now, some Whoa. employees might not like that, but usually the companies will pay you enough to um, go over the hump of the tipping so their customers don't have to tip. It always will come down wow. to the price, the price of donuts. But I just well. wanted to say there is a place. And if our our viewers or listeners know of places that do not take tips, I want to know about it. Because mm. I'll, you know, I want to know, but I'm going to go back. I'll go to Krispy Kreme rather than Dunkin' now because of that policy that I really like. Well, there you go. The more you know. Um, okay, you got time for your last little one or no? I'm done. 
Great. Well, hey, you guys, it's been great to be back on Let's Watch Chewy Mom. Honestly, it's been fun reconnecting with you. I love this. I love I this. And I promise to never um, pay to have you murdered to acquire your debt. Yeah, no kidding. Hey, listen, you got to tell people how to send us. Oh, their, God, um, here it is. You guys, number one thing, we're wrapping up every time we're on the phone. Every you didn't do time this. we're on the phone or talking or something. I go, okay, mom, we'll talk to you soon. I got to go. Oh, hey, one more thing. One more thing. Listen, real quick. Uh, real quick. Because <laughs> you rush me off the phone all the time. We've you been don't, on here you know for what? 45 minutes. You let me listen to everything you have to say and you'll go on and on for 30 minutes and my open my mouth is all gotta go. Gotta go. Really gotta true. go. Okay. That's the truth. But I'm saying you didn't give the phone number. You guys, we want to watch the shows that you want to watch. You tell us what right. to watch and we will watch anything. But there's a special way to Except do porn. it. We won't In watch porn. order, We won't. Mom, go watch the movie Saltburn. You might really like it. No. I don't trust you. Why? Because it's nasty, probably. It's, it's going to be a cinematic classic, probably. Yeah, really. You guys, no. we want you to call in our Let's Watch TV hotline. Call in and we'll dedicate the episode to you when you tell us what to watch. 248-383-5753. That's 248-383-5753. Go ahead. Give it a listen. Give it a call and let us know what to watch. We love you guys so much. And we'll see you next time on... Let's watch TV. Let's watch TV. 2024. Bye.